Retina Rounds, episode number 128, endogenous endophthalmitis. Can the adjunctive use of povidone iodine in the irrigation bottle at the time of vitrectomy improve outcomes? Infectious endophthalmitis is a potentially blinding condition with varying degrees of severity depending on the organism involved. Typically, infectious endophthalmitis is treated with the vitreous tap and injection of antimicrobial medications, with vitrectomy reserved for severe or recalcitrant cases. Today's case, presented by Guest Surgeon of the Week, Dr. Esan Rahimi, demonstrates the adjunctive use of 0.025% povidone iodine in the irrigation bottle during pars plane of vitrectomy for a patient with bilateral endogenous endophthalmitis. It's a challenging case with a very surprising outcome. Let's check it out. The patient is a 62-year-old male with a past ocular history of NAION in both eyes. His baseline vision is 2080 in the right eye and 2025 in the left eye. He was admitted for strep pneumonia, endocarditis, and sepsis, and his visual acuity at bedside is light perception in both eyes. The patient has a hypopion with dense vitritis in both eyes and a possible retinal detachment in the left eye. A vitreous tap and injection of vancomycin, ceftazidime, and voriconazole was performed in both eyes with a plan for bilateral sequential vitrectomy. The difference in this case is that Dr. Rahimi is going to add povidone iodine to the vitrectomy infusion bottle. To achieve a final concentration of 0.025%, 2.5 cc's of 5% povidone iodine was added to a 500 cc BSS infusion bottle. The process is demonstrated here by Dr. Morteza Adam, also a vitroretinal specialist based in Colorado. So let's check out the case first starting with the patient's left eye. You can see here that trocars have been placed and during the core vitrectomy, a choroidal detachment is noted. And this is because the vitreous condensations are clogging the infusion line in the infrotemporal trocar site. So an additional trocar is placed, uh, the infusion line is replaced in this location, and the vitrectomy is carried out and those choroidal detachments settle down. You can see here that there's dense vitritis with preretinal membranes. Uh, attempts are made to elevate the hyaloid face the vitreous is shaved back, and the PVD is extended 360 degrees. Now perfluorocarbon liquid is used to stabilize the posterior pole. You can recall that preoperatively a retinal detachment was, uh, was identified, and you can see here a suprotemporal retinal break around an area uh, of vitreous consolidations and chorioretinal uh, infiltration. So this area is uh, thoroughly shaved, uh, an air fluid exchange is performed through the retinal break and laser is, ap uh, is applied around the retinal break. In this case, silicone oil is used as a tamponade agent uh, and that completes the case for the left eye. Now let's move on to the patient's right eye. You can see here that the degree of the endophthalmitis in the right eye is less severe than in the patient's fellow eye. Triamcinolone is used to stain the posterior hyaloid face. Uh, and a diamond dusted scraper is used to uh, elevate the hyaloid over the macular surface. You can see that there are dents of uh, consolidations of uh, infectious material overlying the retina, and this is all being carefully elevated and removed using the vitreous cutter. Now you can better see the, uh, the hyaloid face, which is uh, being elevated, and the PVD is extended uh, in, in all directions, 360 degrees, using a combination of the vitreous cutter uh, and intraocular forceps. Prophylactic uh, uh, peripheral endophotocoagulation is performed and the patient is left under air. Here's the patient's remarkable post-operative outcome. You can see that both eyes are attached. The right eye recovered vision to 2070 and the left eye improved to 2030. So basically the vision improved back to baseline in both eyes. Here's the OCT macula of the left eye and the OCT of the macula in the right eye both demonstrating very nice anatomic improvements. Now the topical use of povidone iodine is routinely used for infection prophylaxis in patients undergoing ophthalmic surgery and intravitreal injections. In this paper by Dr. Nakashizuka and colleagues published in Retina in 2015, an in vitro study demonstrated bactericidal effects within 15 seconds of exposure for povidone iodine concentrations of 0.01% and above. In four eyes undergoing vitrectomy using 0.025% povidone iodine BSS plus infusion during vitrectomy, 
and ophthalmitis completely resolved in all cases with no adverse events or ocular toxicity. Now, povidone iodine might be a useful adjunct during vitrectomy due to its rapid and wide range of microbicidal activity against bacteria, including multidrug resistant bacteria, fungi, viruses, acanthamoeba, and biofilms. In rabbit models, povidone iodine concentrations of up to 0.027% were well tolerated without toxic effect, while bactericidal effects were seen in concentrations above 0.013%. Furthermore, povidone iodine is generally inexpensive and is widely available. While more data is needed to demonstrate efficacy and safety, this case and others demonstrate the potential for adjunctive povidone iodine infusion during vitrectomy to improve anatomic and functional outcomes. Dr. Rahimi and colleagues are currently preparing a retrospective study on their outcomes using this technique, and we look forward to learning more in the coming months. Thank you very much, Dr. Rahimi, for sharing this outstanding case. If you enjoyed this video, please visit us at retinarounds.com. There you can sign up for our email list. You'll get a notification every time a new video is posted. And if you have an interesting video or a tip or trick that you'd like to share, please follow the links on our website and you can upload your video there. Thanks so much for watching.